And welcome to Spit to the Beat Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey, a.k.a. B. Unstoppable Party. You're joining me live today on Facebook as Stacey Spit to the Beat Per Year. Also, you can find me on Stacey B. Unstoppable Per Year. But definitely go to our YouTube channel right now. We are live at Spit, the number two, D-A-B-E-A-T. Welcome again back into the studio of Spit to the Beat Podcast. Thank you for joining and coming in. Look, we got another great show lined up to you right now. I've been uh, getting this gentleman been talking for a minute, and finally we got him on on the studio. My guest, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, who's residing in Atlanta right now, uh, Roger Hill Music. As I bring him on, hey man, welcome to the show. How you doing today? Good, good, good. I'm glad I finally able to tie you down. <laughs> Yeah, I've been kind of busy running and stuff, so I had a few cool, cool. to kind of stop and do a little something, something. Yeah, I really do appreciate your time. Look, tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name is Roger Hill. I go by the artist name of Roger Hill Music. Um, I've been um, I've been singing f- for. Uh, it's been a long time since I was probably like five years old, but professionally, I just kind of started about two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, in the last, yeah, about two years. So in the last two years, I've done quite a bit. Um, I've um, touched bases with a lot of uh, the top artists in in the industry. Uh, work with um, Grammy Award winning producers. I write all my music, my songs and stuff. So um, I'm kind of deep into this now. It all started as a, uh, I wouldn't say a joke, but, you know, someone did something and then I basically took it and ran with it. So um, I'm here now and uh, trying to, uh, you know, give everyone some really good music. How how was the journey from moving from uh, Rochester, New York to, to Atlanta, um, it was cool. I mean, when I moved here, um, I didn't I didn't come here f- to sing. I've been okay. here about twelve years. Uh, I'm originally in the construction, so um, you know, I came really to you know set things up, kind of start over down this way. Um, and like I said, I was here for ten years before I even thought about you know, doing any type of uh, singing, no more than I would go to uh, Cat's Cafe um, here in Atlanta, which is one of the owners of, uh, one of the singers of Climax. And, okay. um, and we, we go, I go down there on Thursdays and do open mic night, you, you know, playing with the band and everything. So uh, that's really how, how I kind of got things going. You know, it was out of uh, enjoyment and then one thing just led to the next, and here I am. <laughs> Atlanta's keeping you busy, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm busy. You know, um, like I said, I'm in the construction, so um, mm-hmm. uh, that's 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 my my first thing. And the next thing is I'm I'm in the studio and steady, you know, writing new music and right. um, just kind of. Getting everything loaded and cocked. Okay. What What is your take on uh, on the music industry as uh, as we see it today with the new, you know, everybody with the digital platforms more so than back in the day when you know you was almost like selling out your trunk. <laughs> well, of course, I wasn't around during those times as far as in the industry, but talking with um, other artists. You know, like Sherelle and and um, Stephen Young, Stephen Russell, and different people. Um, it was a lot different. Now, um, to me, I feel it's harder, but to other people, they say it's much easier. But 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm out here. I have CDs. Well, you know, a lot of people don't have CD players. So I have to ask people, hey, do you have, have a CD player in your car, your home or whatever, you know? Right. If they do, you know, I'll give them a CD because, you know, it's about promotion. And um, to me, it's, it's harder because even like with the digital the platform, I mean, artists, is, they're not getting a really a whole lot of money. And um, you figure, hey, if you if you spend ten dollars a month for for a uh, subscription, and you get to hear everybody music, it's different from when you had a uh, a CD or something that you were pushing selling for a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars, you know. So yeah. artists is not really getting a whole lot of money from streams. So the only way that they can really do something if they go get on shows and then you know you got so many artists out here everybody can't be on stages so right this you have to do different things to get there so it's definitely different and based upon what i've seen in these last uh two years you know it's 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 a trip yeah so what is what is your avenue as far as moving you know moving along those, those lines of getting getting your money basically well, I mean, I really, really ain't got into the money yet, as they say. Um, basically, it's all about marketing, uh, getting people to know who you are, um, see who you are, hear your music. You, you got to have a good product. And yeah. if the product is good, you know, that kind of help. But you still got to keep marketing, you know, through social media, uh, radio, different places. You you got to keep hitting it. Um so it's it's one of those things where you know a lot of inspiring artists who don't understand how this business is gone are the days when you know people go stand on the block in front of Motown or Atlantic Records and singing and stuff and then right. somebody's gonna come out and say, Oh, I'm gonna sign you. Oh, them days gone. Ain't nothing like that no more. Yeah, yeah. you know. They it's almost to. like uh, you know, artists now, you know, if they're getting a good social media followings, I think that's the way the record labels are looking at them now. You know, you got more of a bargain chip more so now than you had before with the with social media. Well, I mean, yeah, and then you gotta understand some some of these artists that are out here. You have some talented ones who are not mm -hmm. really recognized. And then you have some ones that's not talented who are doing all kinds of stuff, you know? Um, I, I guess it's, you know, based upon who has the, who has the most followers or whatever, but um, I guess they say a slow grind is, is, is the best grind, you know? Yeah. In some cases, but okay. it's definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a change uh, time that we're living in. Look, I'm gonna take a quick break. I want to come back. Want to talk about your your music and your single. Nobody knows, and uh, how is it working with Russell, Stephen Russell in the in the studio? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. We'll come right back. You're listening to Spit to the Beat podcast with your host, the one, the only Stacy B. Unstoppable. Hey, this is Stacey, a.k.a. Beat Unstoppable Per You with Spit to the Beat Podcast. Would you like to be my guest if you're a singer, songwriter, musician, producer, or promoter? Give me a call at 901-341-6777 or email me at myguest at spittothebeat.com. And we're back to Spit to the Beat Podcast with my very special guest all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, residing in Atlanta, Georgia, Roger Hill Music. How did you come about changing from Roger Hill to Roger Hill Music? What What is that? Well, what happened when I first started out, it was Roger Hill. Right. And then um, there was another Roger Hill. Uh, he was a white guy. White okay. Gentleman. And what was happening is like when people were going – uh, trying to download my music on Spotify. Uh, they'll type in Roger Hill with my song, and then it was going to him. 
it was a it was a big pain. Oh and, wow! Uh, so what I had to do was go back and and re redo all the music, and then just like I wasn't about to come up with another name. So I was like, listen, I'll just add music on to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just add music on to it. But you know, everybody know Roger Hill. You know, just Roger Hill music. So. I just started pushing that, building that brand, and, and, and go from there, you know. So, you know, you're like Roger Hill music. <laughs> so, yeah, I had another artist on, on my show, uh, podcast, and she had to, soon as she released some music, she found out someone actually had her music, her stage name, and she had to go back. She just went back to her original name. So, it wasn't too far from what she was calling herself. So, she had the same situation. So, it's, it's funny that you would say that that happened to you as well. It's yeah. something that you just don't know. I mean, when you just start out, you don't know. You know. Yeah, yeah. You do. You do much as much research as you can. Then you find out something else is, is out there similar, so it can yeah affect you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your music, man. Uh, I enjoyed the song that you sent me. Nobody knows. How was it working with Stephen Russell in the studio, Grammy Award winner? Steve was cool. Um, I can't remember how how do we 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 met through uh, this guy named Joe Mason, and uh, he had heard Steve had heard my music, uh, and he he liked how he liked my vocals, and um, so we wind up getting together and you know decided hey let's do something and then um, he sent me something to listen at. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's not bad, you know. And then I started writing off of it. And then, you know, we wind up, uh, I wind up going out to Dallas and we went into the studio and then we just started creating. So um, we've done, so far, we've done, we're actually working on a new album. We've done so far one, about four songs right now. Okay. And um, Nobody Knows is basically like a teaser. To let people know exactly, you know, what we're getting ready to come out with and do, you know, so we 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 really have some nice, some hot music that people is gonna love. Um, but you know, right now I have an EP out, and um, people are loving it. You know, they're loving it. Uh, I, I write to the ladies, and of course, ladies love it. But the craziest <laughs> thing about it is a lot of guys love my music also. A lot of guys, so. Um, I had one of my fraternity brothers, you know, call me one day. He was like, yo, this CD is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few other ones because like, I'd be giving CDs out for promotion and stuff. And, yeah. and, you know, when these guys out of the blue, like, text you, yo, it's hot, man. You know, that lets me know I got something because I know women love it, you know. Um, cool, cool. We'll Let's go ahead and play it, and then we're going to come back and you talk a little bit more about it, okay? Yes. Oh, nobody knows the way I feel Thinking about this love that I haven't made you're the only one that was made for me Desires of your love, memories of you on me There's no other place I'd rather be Lay you down, hold me and squeeze me Baby, nobody knows the way I feel about you Say 
Nice, 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 man. I know you had talked about you you produce your music, your I guess your uh your feeling for your music, like heartfelt, soulful music in a in uh, I guess your process. And going into this song, nobody knows what was the process with that. Um well Steve came up with the track and um the track was a little bit different from the actual song. And okay. I basically I write to music. So when he sent it over, I just listened to it. I listen to it and, and then you know I'll put it in in the car or truck or whatever and I'm driving and I'll be on the job site, I'm listening, and then things start coming to me. Nobody knows basically <laughs> it was inspired uh by X. Um I had I had went to visit her one day. And, um, you know, how, you know, you're going back and forth and then, you know, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, you know, I, I just started shaking my head like nobody knows. I started saying nobody knows. And then it hit me. So what I did was when I left, I wrote it down mm -hmm. and I started to develop in the song. You know, I'm very creative with um, my lyrics. Um, I just I just did a song called. Uh, Hide and seek. And okay. What it is is I took and the game hide and seek. You know, everybody you know played that game back in the days, either hide and seek or hide to go get it or whatever. And right, <laughs> I wanted to take that song, take that and write and and develop a love song out of it. And I went into the studio about a couple of weeks ago and laid it down, and it's it's really hot. Um, I have a a new artist. Uh, by the name of Save, uh, that will be doing some stuff with me. Uh, matter of fact, we just did two two songs together. Okay, she's really hot, can sing. I mean, she's really really good. And uh, so I'm gonna also add her on to some 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 other stuff. And then um, uh, I gotta talk with Steve because I actually want to uh, write and produce something for her because her vocals is. Is, is his own point, you know. I put it right on up there with the fates and the Karen, the Karen Whites and all of them. Okay, so, okay. So, um, yeah, she can she can really do something. So that's going to be some someone that I'm going to push, and um, also she's going to do some stuff with me. So cool. I would love to get her on the show. Oh, definitely. We can make all that happen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, the, your music, man, is like I said, it's heartfelt soulful beats and stuff you have performed on the stage with some of the legends uh in your career even up to this point mm -hmm. you know definitely with uh, uh opening up for a lot of major acts who was the, some of those acts that you opened up for of uh, uh, i opened up and you understand i've only been doing this two years but in these two right. years <laughs> I've, I've opened up for baby face um Loose Ends, Lakeside, uh, Sherelle, Climax, uh, Leela James, um, some Southern Soul artists too. I can't remember. Uh, can't remember the one guy. He was pretty pretty big, but um, yeah. So um, I've I've um, done a few things and 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 steady, still trying to hit at it. You know. I mean, that's a lot within two years. Most artists, as uh, you know, I know they would probably would consider you new, but most artists, even at that time, five, six years before they may get that opportunity to open up for a major artist, legends that's been out there, and you have done it in two years. That's amazing within itself. Yeah, and you know, it's, 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 it's who you know. And mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, um, you know, I've had uh, the legends like Ron Isley, you know, they've heard me sing. Uh, he's heard my music. Uh, he's he's co-signed. Hey, yeah. Um, Keith Sweat. Yeah. Um, Stephen Russell. Uh, I've had some some top. I'm um, even um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis have heard my music. You know, through Sherelle. So um, they're definitely, from what I was told. They definitely like my my writing skills, you know. 
I've, I've had um, Alexander O'Neill that actually uh, wanted me to write him some stuff, you know. I wanted to try to get my stuff out the way before I kind of really get to writing other people's stuff, you know. But I think that I have some great music that others would probably want to sing some of my stuff, you know. <laughs> but, right. But as so they how say, has, uh, how's, how has a, being in Atlanta helped your career? I mean, that's, that's kind of like the, now the mega hub. For Tim, I mean for film, video, audio, recording, where all the stars, black stars are, are migrating to. So how has that for you being in Atlanta helped your career? Well, you know, be let be honest with you. Well, I actually got my start out of Cast Cafe. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you want to say, it, yeah, it, it helped it on that end, but as far as all the contacts and the people that I met in order to get to these different places that I've named, they didn't live in Atlanta. You know, everyone lived in other places, you know, Chicago, New York, Dallas, California. Um, okay. So even though Atlanta is basically what they call the, the hub, the, the entertainment mecca, um, but there are a lot of people who live here, though. So you meet a lot of the, the musicians and stuff that, that, that sings or plays for a lot of the major artists. But um, I haven't really, like I said, most, most of the people that I've actually met are, were from out of the area. But people would think because I live here mm-hmm. and I sing that, you know, hey, you, you, you did it there. Not really, no more than... I got my start at a cast cafe here and that's basically about it. Okay, cool. And hold tight one more time. We'll take a little short break. Thank you for listening to spit to the beat podcast. Want to know how you can help be a sponsor by going to our website at www.spittothebeatpodcast.com and click the support tab. You can also join us each and every week live at YouTube at Speed to the Beat. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. Thank you for your support. And we're back to Spit to the Beat podcast. I'm your host, Stacey, a.k.a. Be Unstoppable Per You. And joining me live virtually in the studio is Roger Hill Music out of Atlanta, Georgia. We was talking a bit before the, the break, the short break, you know, uh, being in Atlanta and how it has worked for your career and stuff like that. But let's move a little bit on along with that. You being in Atlanta, you perform with some legends. You open up, you know, concerts and stuff with Isley Brothers and, and, and Sherelle and so many others. What is What was a memorable moment, you know, opening up for them or even just – being on stage you know <laughs> i really didn't think too much of it you know uh because i was more focused on trying to get people to hear who i were who i was and what i had to offer um it was cool you know just like when, when i had the opportunity to sing for ron isley mm-hmm. and um I had one of my, my one of my frat brothers out of chicago he he the one had uh, hooked that up where I met Ron and, um, you know, Ron is a true legend and uh, I'll never forget I'm back there in the back and uh, my frat was like, yo, sing something, you know? So I sung uh, my song, Come Back to Me. And then I'll never forget Ron, Ron's uh, mother-in-law was like, sing one of Ron's songs. And then I, I wound up singing, uh, make me say it again, girl, for, you know? Yeah. So, um, once he heard me and stuff, you know, so then he had told his wife, he was like, hey, he said, turn that uh, that uh, that thing on over there, which was, you know, his little music thing. And that's when he, you know, let me listen to his album that came out last year and, you know, with Beyonce and all that stuff on there. And it was really nice, you know, so being able to uh, be a part of, of something like that 
and just meet different people, you know, like, you know, me and Sherelle, we cool. Matter of fact, I just talked to her today. I called to check on her. You know, mm-hmm. it's like once you once you in the mix and you amongst, you know, the different people, Teddy Riley and all these and stuff, it's like they're just like you and I, you know, they're just like you and I. And um, everybody's trying to, you know, do different things. Like with me, I'm trying to to grind and and, and get people to hear the great product that I have. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I feel I got good music, but I'm based upon what other people are telling me and saying, they love the music. So my job is to try to get more people to know who Roger Hill music is and to also hear the music. So that they, you know, also can fall in love. The funniest thing that um, I experienced is um, there was this lady who was 84 years old. I gave her a CD and she had called me and she told me, she said, listen, she said, your music is so good. It makes me want to make love to somebody. Wow. Started laughing because she's 84, right? Four years old, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, this is really good. She said, she said after I listened to it, it made me want to make love to somebody. That's just what oh, she wow. thought, and I was deep. <laughs> yeah, I was deep. <laughs> hey, look, what uh, what can we expect? I know we we are almost two months complete in 2024. What can the people look out for Roger Hill music for this year? Well, right now I'm I'm pushing that nobody knows. I have a new EP out that just dropped out and just came out in um, it was October or November, and I have six songs on there. You know, everyone can go to Roger Hill music. You know, um, and listen to the music that I have. I think people are going to really love it. And you have to really pay attention to the lyrics because the lyrics is very meaningful. Um, everyone has experienced some type of um, situation when it comes to love. One of the things that when I was writing um, my first song, and I'll never forget, I had told all my social media uh, friends, I was like, I'm just going to write love songs. Mm-hmm. And all the music, all the music and the, the songs that I write are feel good songs. I don't want to write depressing stuff because during a time of COVID, there's a lot of things that were going on. People were getting, going through divorces, breakups, you know, yeah. and yeah. many people was wanting love, needing love. And I was like, well, what I'll do is just write about it. I'll make people feel that they think that they're there. You know, and then after the end of the song, then they oh, well, I'm back where I started. But at least when you listen to, to my music, you will have a good feeling. You know, just like I told you where, where the, the 84-year-old woman was like, hey, you know, your music made me want to make love. And yeah. you got somebody at that age that's saying something like that based upon what they're hearing, you know, I mean, I'm doing something, right? I'm on the right track, you know? Right. You, because uh, you tapped in, you, you said it in your bio uh, when you was writing Nobody Knows that how that you dug a little deeper than the, the surface meaning of Nobody Knows, but you was trying to get the people to understand the deeper lyrics in this in the song uh, as far as feeling in that a man is trying to explain himself more than do he really, un- do this woman really understand what this man is trying to do? Well, again, every song is different. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, basically, the concept that nobody knows, like I said, I was there talking to my ex, you know, when I got the, um, when it was inspired to me. And it was basically like, you know, a person is saying all these things or whatever. And it's like, sometimes people don't really know how a person truly feel. You can, you can, Tell a person, but sometimes it's, it's one of those things you hear me, but you're not listening, you know, and people hear what they want to hear. OK, True. and True. and it's just like sometime you sometime when 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 going through relationships and stuff, you know, I've always believed that actions 
mean more than anything. A person can tell you whatever, but don't mean anything or don't show you. So when I was writing that, it's, it's, it was so many different mixed feelings, you know, because it's basically like nobody knows. When you're trying to show love, when you're trying to give love, you know, but people are not actually paying attention. It's like nobody knows, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, what do you do? People looking at the wrong thing. It's like nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows how you truly feel. And, you know, that's always hard in a relationship when you're really trying to help people understand how you really feel about them, you know, and do they really understand it. And like you said, your title, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, people, people, um, you know, like when, when, when like with, with us men, we deal with love different from other people. You know, women do the same thing. And I just feel that, you know, we all should come together and work for, as a common goal. But it's just times that people are not on the same page. I think mm-hmm. we just got to just got to take our time and get to know each other. Yeah. And I think in, in today's society, you know, people are not really taking the time to get to know each other. Women so are right. Is, is that the type of music that you're, you're, you're expressing in 2024? Yeah, whatever. Put it like this. I don't know what I'm going to write about. You know, <laughs> and that's the honest to God truth. When I, when I listen to some of the, some of the music, the tracks and stuff, mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what I'm gonna write about. But what I do, one well, number one things I do on every song that I've wrote so far, I'm on my tenth song. I always pray. I pray and I ask God to give me the the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength, the ability to write these songs. And every song that you've heard so far, that's what came out based upon me praying and asking God that. Because I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know what I was going to write about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it, that's the best way I would say, say, you know, allow God to speak to you, and then you move on that on that uh, note, that, that little bug that he, he whispered into your ear, and then, hey, the world will be amazed at what they hear. So far, that's 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 what's going on. You know, people are amazed. They they really love um, what I put together. Awesome, awesome. So, Tim, artists, uh, we're really wrapping the show up. Uh, where can they find you, and how can they get your music? So, everyone can follow me on all social media: uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, under Roger Hill Music. Um, also, I have a Pandora station. If, if anyone want to listen to Pandora, Roger Hill Music Radio. Um, I'm on all digital platforms, Spotify, Apple, Amazon. I'm on YouTube. Everything is under Roger Hill Music. And, um, and then also, if you want to go and learn a little more about me, go to my website, rogerhillmusic.com. And also, it, it, it give you a little sample of each one of my songs that I have out. And once you go and take a little listen to it, then, you know, hey, okay, I'm going to go buy that, download it or whatever. But, you know, just go and check it all out, you know. Take the website out, go download the music, but everything is under Roger Hill Music. Great, great, great. Look, again, thank you for joining us on Spit to the Beat podcast, taking time out of your schedule. I know you're a very busy man. Had to finally tie you down. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, we made it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Cool. Hold tight as I wrap up the show. I'll be right back.
Thank you for watching Spit to the Beat podcast. Join us again for another live episode next week.